All right, again, we will be continuing on with our transactions. And so we last finished with the uh, three-parter transaction, and we move on to the next one. We paid wages of part-time employees six fifty. So here we're giving up six hundred and fifty dollars of cash. What did we receive? Well, we received the use of the employees. Okay, if you don't pay the employees, we don't own them. If you don't pay the employees, they walk off and they don't work for us. Okay, so we paid out, we gave up cash, and we received use of employees. Okay, for cash, of course, we'll use the cash account in the chart of account so we know that that's an asset. We paid cash out, so we now have less of it, and that will be a, a decrease in an asset as a credit. Here, we're going to use use of employee, so whenever we use something, that's going to be an expense. So we look up in our chart of accounts under expenses and there we have wages expense. So that's the account that we will use wages expense and that is an expense we use the employees more than we did before, so we have an increase in an expense, and so that would be a debit. We have our debits equal our credits, so yes, they balance. Okay, next transaction. Okay, we earn delivery fees for the remainder of the amount, amounting to 1050. And that included 430s in cash and 620 on account. Okay, so uh, we received some cash and we received some customers owe us. And together, those two things that we received equals the amount that we gave up of selling services, performing services. Now, so this again is a three-parter or a compound entry, but we can break it up easily into two parts. So let's just do that this time. Uh, we will do the cash part. So we're gonna um, talk about that we sold services for $430 and received cash. So we gave up, sold services, and we received cash. When we sell services, we know that's going to be a revenue. We look in the revenue section of the chart of the accounts, and there's only one. It's called delivery fees, and it is a revenue. We sold more services than we did five minutes ago, so that's an increase. An increase in a revenue is going to be a credit. Now, we can go ahead and put the number next to here because this is not the whole $1,050. This is only the $430 of cash sales that we had. We received cash, so we'll use the account called cash. We know that's an Set. We received cash, so we now have more cash than we did. An increase in an asset is a debit. It will also be $430. So will my debits equal my credits? So I say yes. Now, we're going to do the other part of that was the fact that we gave up sold services. 
but we receive this time instead of receiving cash, we receive the fact that the customer owes us. So for sold services, again, we'll have delivery fees, and that is a revenue. We sold more services than five minutes ago. We had an increase in revenue, and an increase in revenue is a credit. When customers owe us, we look on the chart of accounts. That's going to be the accounts receivable account, which we know is an asset. The customers owe us more than they did five minutes ago, so that is an increase. An increase in an asset is a debit. Okay, and we'll put our amounts on here. So that was uh, $620. And we'll put it over to the side here, 620. So if you're gonna go ahead and do those journal entries, you would know you would have break those down into two journal entries. Now we could have done this as one transaction as a three-parter and shown a debit in cash for 430, a debit in accounts receivable for 620, and a credit in delivery fees for the whole 1050. And we could have done it that way as well on our um, journal entry. Okay, so here we have, uh, let's see, Amanda withdrew cash for personal use. This is our last transaction. Um, and so here the business, again, just like owner investments, whenever it deals with the owner, figure out what's happening with the cash as far as the business is concerned. It's the business receiving the cash or the business giving up the cash. Now, Amanda personally withdrew the cash. So that means that the Amanda is taking cash out of the business checking account, and she's putting it into her own personal checking account. So Amanda personally is receiving the cash, but the business is giving up the cash. So once we know what's happening to the cash, okay, the business is giving up the cash. So once we get the cash in the correct box, then the other box we just have to worry about, is it owner investment or owner withdrawal? And this, of course, is owner withdrawal. Okay, for the give up, for cash, cash, which we know is an asset. We paid it out, so we have less of it. That's a decrease in an asset, which is a credit. For owner withdrawals, we know that uh, when we have owner withdrawals, okay, we're going to look in the owner's equity section, and there's AA comma drawing is the name of the account that we're going to use. And that is owner's equity dash withdrawals. And we have more withdrawals, more owner withdrawals than we did five minutes ago. So that is an increase in owner withdrawals and an increase in withdrawals is a debit. We have one debit and one credit. So yes, they balance. So in this case, we did not have to use our third sheet. We were able to finish in uh, just using up 16 transaction analysis boxes. So once we have this done like this, we can very easily make journal entries. I'm like for this one up here, I easily know that I'm going to debit prepaid insurance and credit 
cash. Okay, for this one that's over to the left, I'm going to debit, supplies, credit, cash. Okay, so you're going to just debit and credit whatever you told yourself on the analyzing sheets. It's a way to make sure that you're using the correct accounts from the chart of accounts and making sure that you're using the correct, whether it's debit or credit, before you ever get to the journal entry section.